Hi, everyone. Uh, very pleased to be here. My name is Jamin Vandenhoek. I'm an assistant professor of geography at Oregon State University. I'm going to be talking about application of Google Earth Engine to study refugee communities globally. So uh, this is a global problem. 16.5 million refugees under UN mandate uh, as of the middle of last year. Now, more than two thirds of the global refugee population is in what the UNHCR calls a protracted refugee scenario. So that is where basic rights and essential economic, social, and psychological needs remain unfulfilled after years. Given that refugee camps persist by some reports on average of 19 years uh, at this stage, this is an intergenerational problem as well as a global problem. So securing the welfare of refugee communities is a pressing concern. We know that that will become more of a challenge, I should have mentioned. We're focusing, uh, or most of the refugee camps are concentrated in Central Africa here. And this is also where we're expecting uh, extreme declines in serial productivity um, by most models that IPCC is generating. We don't need to wait until 2050 to see these challenges. We're already seeing acute near-term food insecurity in these same regions today. <laughs> so, our question for this uh, research project is, have these refugee camps been systematically established in locations of relative environmental marginalization or climatic sensitivity? I'm going to be talking about three different variables we're looking at um, to assess this precipitation, vegetative condition, and ecosystem sensitivity to climate variability, which is published uh, in Nature by Seddon et al. in 2016. So we have precipitation from chirps, vegetative condition from MODIS, and then we have a VSI represented here. We also, we, we study these at 922 camps across 60 countries, and we basically compare what we see the refugee camps to a random sample within each country. Here's our country by country stratified random sample distribution. And I'm gonna show two countries here. Um, the first is Kenya. This is a host country to large numbers of Sudanese and Somali refugees. In this case, we see that Kenyan camps uh, tend to have lower precipitation, lower NDVI, and you know, comparable vegetative sensitivity. Shifting to Nepal, totally different scenario, totally different refugee, uh, the source of refugee population. There we have Nepalese uh, camps with higher precipitation, about comparable NDVI and lower sensitivity. So suffice it to say, uh, we have a highly variable degree of marginality at global refugee camps. And we think this is a good rationale for greater consideration of long-term vulnerabilities at camps under present and future climate change. Thanks very much. Thanks, Jamin. This is just more of a comment, but it would be interesting to overlay some of the previous, uh, I forget the word, the, the transportation. Accessibility. Yeah, ex yeah, accessibility, and to see to what extent that it overcomes or uh, ameliorates environmental factors. Yeah, that's a great point. I was taking notes on all these uh, talks. Um, we are dealing with some spatial statistics as well. Um, we haven't done anything nearly as advanced uh, as accessibility, but we're looking at proximity to roadways. Uh, I didn't show it here, but over half of refugee camps are within 50 kilometers of a national border, which they're geographically marginalized, it's out of sight, out of mind, and they're also put into a scenario where they're more sensitive to uh, concerns over security, being right across the border from the country that they just fled. So there's a, there's a strong spatial component that isn't captured by satellite imagery. <laughs>